Hi guys, welcome to Topnotch TV, the online platform where we enrich the ocean of knowledge, where we demystify aspects and concepts. In our biology series today, your fellow living organism, Sir Bernard, we are going to talk about matters the heart. Our circulatory system comprising of the heart and the blood vessels. And because blood flows in closed blood vessels, that is why we say we have a closed circulatory system. Not open like in insects. Our heart, which is our focus for today, has four distinct chambers. We have the arteria, two of them, the left arteria and the right arteria. The ventricles, two of them also, the right ventricle and the left ventricle. In this, our heart, remember, blood flows into the heart twice before it goes to our general body circulation. And that is why we say we have double circulation. And as always, remember, we're talking of the right or the left with respect to the heart, assuming the heart is in you. So this part, the left, the right. On the paper, as a photograph, the other way around. <laughs> now, which are the main structures that form our mammalian heart? And what are their functions? What are their adaptations? The main functions, the main structures, the main parts in our heart are, of course, the auricles, the right and the left auricles or atria, the ventricles, that's the left ventricle and the right ventricle. And then we have the blood vessels and the valves. <clears throat> what is conspicuous in this our model of the heart for instance are the four chambers the right portion of the heart receives blood from the body tissues and this blood is rich in carbon 4 oxide. It is less oxygenated. The function of the right auricle is to receive blood which is rich in carbon 4 oxide from the body cells and the body tissues. That tells us that the blood vessel that is joining into the right aurico, that blood vessel contains blood which is rich in carbon dioxide, and this is the vena cava. We will have the superior vena cava bringing blood from the head, and the inferior vena cava bringing blood from the lower parts of the body. The right Atrium therefore receives blood that is rich in carbon dioxide. Blood from the right auricle drains into the right ventricle via a valve, and this valve is the tricuspid. Tricuspid valve. Try because it has three flaps. <laughs> 
the right ventricle pumps blood into our lungs into the lungs through the pulmonary artery there is a valve inside the pulmonary artery that is a pulmonary valve which is a semilunar valve which will prevent backflow of blood into the ventricle in the lungs the purpose of blood going into the lungs is for oxygenation gaseous exchange oxygenation blood from the lungs flows back into the heart through the pulmonary vein so you will have a pulmonary vein from the right lung from the left lung <coughs> that blood which is rich in oxygen or oxygenated blood gets into the heart and the first chamber will be the left atrium and therefore the function of this left atrium is to receive blood rich in oxygen from the lungs the left auricle then blood from the left auricle or atrium gets into the left ventricle via another valve that is the bicuspid valve by because it has two flaps so the role of the bicuspid valve is to prevent the backflow of blood from the left ventricle to the left atrium what is the role of the left ventricle it pumps blood into the outer and that blood passes another set of valves that is the semilunar valve which prevents backflow of blood from the outer into the left ventricle the blood that gets into the outer will be rich in oxygen and the outer is the largest artery from the outer now you will have branches of arteries into the different organs those are the key structures we take notice that there is a separation between the right chambers of the heart and the left the separation is made possible by a muscular wall that is called the septum or intraventricular wall the septum which prevents the mixing of deoxygenated blood like now that will be on your right ventricle with oxygenated blood that will be in your left ventricle that is the role of the interventricular septum and we've uh, sometimes we've heard of the word it's not so common about blue babies it is a genetic uh, defect where if there is a hole in the septum which allows the oxygenated blood mixing with the deoxygenated blood it means the blood going now to the cells uh will not be rich in oxygen and where they call that condition as blue babies is remember in a representation of the veins like in this circulatory system 
the veins represented by blue they are because of blood being less oxygenated the arteries represented by red because it the the blood in the arteries is rich in oxygen so blue babies will mean the cells of this baby the cells of this person are not receiving sufficient oxygen and that is the danger or the disadvantage if the oxygenated and deoxygenated blood in the heart were to mix we have mentioned the role of valves in the heart the role of valves by cuspid valves prevents backflow of blood from the left ventricle into the left atrium tricuspid valve prevents backflow of blood from the right ventricle to the right atrium the semilunar valves prevent backflow of blood into the ventricles the valves are also adapted to do to, to, to control or to prevent the backflow of blood because they are attached to the muscular walls by structures that we call the tendons that we call chordae tendinae. They are tendons that prevent the valves from turning inside out, meaning bulging back into the atria when blood is being pumped from the ventricles. In this chart, we have captured the parts of the mammalian heart, their role, and the adaptations of some of those key parts. And that gives an outlook of the internal structure of our heart. If we were to trace the flow of blood in our heart, we will start with from the vena cava, the vena cava into the right atrium. From the right atrium, so we have the superior vena cava from the above the, 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 the lungs, that is the neck and the head, and then the inferior vena cava from the parts of the lower parts of the body. From the right atrium, tricuspid valve, right ventricle, semilunar valve, pulmonary artery, to the lungs. From the lungs, pulmonary vein, left atrium, cusp by cuspid valve, left ventricle into the outer via the semilunar valve. The outer transports blood which is rich in oxygen to all parts of the body the head included, the legs, the hands, all parts of the body. And therefore, the blood has to be pumped with a higher pressure than, for instance, the blood in the pulmonary artery, which is only getting into the lungs for oxygenation. And that is the reason why the left ventricle which is responsible for pumping of blood into the outer to be taken into all parts of the body is more muscular. It has thick muscles compared to the right ventricle. In order to generate higher pressure to pump blood at a high pressure or at a higher pressure to all parts of the body. Also, in this model, <coughs> this is the pulmonary artery. And universally, we say arteries carry blood that is oxygenated. However, 
In this case, the pulmonary artery has been represented by blue, which indicates blood that is less, less oxygenated, amadeoxygenated, because pulmonary artery is an exceptional artery because it is the only artery that transports blood that is rich in carbon dioxide because the blood in the pulmonary artery is moving from the right ventricle into the lungs where gaseous exchange will take place. Likewise, unlike all other veins, the pulmonary vein here has been represented by color red to indicate that it is carrying blood that is rich in oxygen. Why? It is transporting blood from the lungs where oxygenation has taken place. Gaseous exchange takes place in the lungs. So the blood getting from the coming from the lungs thread in the pulmonary vein is rich in oxygen. That is what makes pulmonary vein different from other veins. In our next session, we shall see now the cardiac cycle. What happens during the pumping of blood? What happens when blood is pu being pumped out of the ventricles? And what happens for blood to move? into the heart, atrium, ventricle, the entire process, the cardiac cycle. Until that next session, remember, look out for our top-notch charts, subscribe to our online platform, The Ocean of Knowledge, Top Notch TV. Welcome, next session. Bye.